Hello, we're back. In episode two, I said we'd be talking about the Invader port to Arduboy, another hobby handheld gaming device. I purchased mine from Adafruit. Arduboy also sells them on their own website. I'll leave a link. They also have a version called Arduboy FX with over 200 games pre-installed on it. Here's the Arduboy website. They're showing the Arduboy FX for Currently, it's at $54, and they have some available right now, which is great, because they were out of stock on uh, Adafruit when I was checking. And if you look down the page here, you'll see the uh, specs as well. For the last episode, I showed the Pi Gamer running my Invader demo in Ardaboy mode. The interesting thing is, when I moved that code to the actual Ardaboy, it ran too fast, so I had to slow parts of it down to make it playable. Okay, so here's Invader running on the actual Arduboy. And you can see I've used the built-in LED for to show when I when I hit the Invader and also if he hits me it turns red as well. So there it is running on Arduboy and um again, this is programmed in the Arduino IDE and C++. And there's the game over. Here's a look at the FX version with all the built-in games. That's pretty amazing. There's over 200 games in here. And here's a very Zelda-like uh, game that comes on here as well. Okay, so this time I wanted to talk a little bit about graphics and sound. So with sound effects, sometimes you can just import uh, mp3 WAV files or AUG files and they are just digitized sound effects. So you can grab the actual sound effects for a game and, and plug them in and, and they'll sound exactly like they do in the actual game. Other times you have to create your own sound effects. Um, on the Commodore series and the Atari computers, you actually have to program an ADSR envelope, which looks something like this. So you have an attack, decay, sustain, and release, and this stuff has to be programmed. I'll, I'll leave a link to this uh, page um, as well. It's pretty interesting. But this stuff is pretty tough, so when I have to create my own sounds, they're, they're awful. If I get to drop in a digitized sound effect, then they sound so much better. Um, that being said, we'll go back to graphics. Now, I've had to create several different versions of my Invader graphics. So this is the full set up here of, uh, at least for my Invader demo, of uh, the actual arcade style graphics, pretty much pixel for pixel. Um, this is the, the two Invader um, animation shots for, for, or, for, or frames for one of the invaders. And then this is his, uh, his shot. And then what it looks like when he blows up. And then here's the turret and the turret explosion frames, and then the turret shot as well. Now you can see with Pico 8 here, um, we have eight by eight characters. Now you can make larger characters as well you can you can scale the frame up and you can draw actually larger larger characters but um, I chose to stick with the 8 by 8 because they fit better on the screen so I've made my own version of, of the full set of uh, invader characters in, in 8 by 8 now there are some um, you can see here that I have three different sizes this is the, the full arcade um, invader this is my my version of an 8x8 character. This guy is 5x5. Five five. Now the reason is that I had to create a small one like this is um, if later on I do make a, a Timex Sinclair or a ZX81 version of my Invader demo in assembly on this machine, um, this size character is going to work better on, 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 at this resolution. And you can see I actually built this guy with these characters from that you can see here on the, on the keys for the computer. Um, another thing I want to show you, there's a web-based uh, 
character editor. Um, I'll leave a link for, for Petsky as well. And you can see here that I've reprogrammed eight characters for the Commodore machine. Actually, this is for the VIC-20 because the VIC-20 doesn't have sprites. I mentioned that in the first episode. So I've created this um, eight by eight character set that I, I ended up using for Invader in there. Now there's a tiny little handheld that we're going to go over in a future episode called the Thummy. And you can see I also used my tiny Invader um, for this version as well. That This device is only about an inch tall. It's very, very small. So um, I wouldn't be able to get too many of these on the screen if um, I made them much bigger. But, but you can make larger sprites for this machine. Also, getting back to uh, sound, um, somewhere in between downloading a digital sound effect and just dropping it into your game or having to program an ADSR envelope, there's uh, Pico 8's version of editing sound where you can literally just sort of draw a waveform in here and play it. So you can, you can draw a simple waveform and play it. Okay, so that about wraps up episode 3 of my journey in game programming. Please like and subscribe and leave any comments or suggestions you may have that could make these a better experience. Next episode, I will be showing a port of Invader for an Arduino Nano clone using a breadboard, some resistors, a screen, and a few buttons. It's also programmed in C++ using the Arduino IDE and a library from Adafruit. This is tied to the screen, an SSD1306. Until then, bye, and I'll talk to you next time.